Section 6.7 is about Hess's Law. Um, I think Hess's Law was gone over pretty well in, in uh, Honors Chemistry. I th hope you find it to be fairly simple. So what is Hess's Law? It's the Hess's Law summation of heat, and it states that for a chemical equation that can be written as a sum of two or more steps, the enthalpy change for the overall equation is the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps. So basically we just add up all the delta H's for every step in an overall reaction to get the overall delta H. <coughs> so heats of a reaction are delta H, H can determine by uh, one, performing stoichiometric calculations, two, using a calorimeter, which we'll be doing in our lab coming up, and three, using Hess's Law. So the reason why Hess's Law works is because it is a state function. So it doesn't matter what path it takes. It depends on the initial and the final. So we can just add up the different steps to get the final. So let's take a look at this example. So, so we're given the following data. So we have solid sulfur that is added to oxygen, and so it's burned in the oxygen, to create sulfur dioxide. And the delta H for this is negative 297 kilojoules. So then the next step is the two um, SO3 gas is going to break down to give us two SO2 plus oxygen gas, and the delta H for that is 198 kilojoules. So the question is, can we use these two steps to find the total enthalpy change for the following reaction? Two sulfur solid plus three oxygen gas gives us two sulfur trioxide gas. And if we can do this, then how do we find the delta H? Take a look at these two equations. The first thing I need to do is look at the bottom and see what am I trying to look for? Well, I need two sulfurs. Well, I notice with the first equation, if I multiply it by two, I would have two sulfurs. So when I multiply it by two, I multiply the entire thing by two, including the delta H. The second thing I notice is that if I flip the second equation around, this is why I have a line drawn in it, I would end up with two SO3s as a product, which is what I want as a product. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, but when I flip this equation around, I have to change the sign of the delta H because now it's going from an endothermic process to an exothermic process. So I make it negative 198 kilojoules. So now all I have to do is make sure that I have everything I need. So I have two sulfurs, and here when I multiply this out, I get two sulfurs plus two oxygens gives me two sulfur dioxides, and then my delta H is also multiplied by two. So, um, at this point now I have two sulfurs, that's going to be uh, in my final equation. I have three oxygens, so up at the top I have two oxygens, down here I have one more, that gives my three oxygens. I have two sulfur, tri two sulfur trioxides, but notice I do not have sulfur dioxides. Well, since they're on each side, I can cancel them out. So now the final step is I have to take two times negative 297 plus negative 198. And when I do that, I should get delta H is negative 792 kilojoules. This is Hess's Law. Take a look at these two example problems for Hess's Law. Um, I have two of the following slides that um, will show you how these Hess's Laws work out. So uh, bear with me here. For this first reaction, I'm looking to find two carbons plus oxygen to give me two carbon dioxide. And I'm trying to figure out what the total delta H is. So I'm using the two uh, formulas at the bottom, the two reactions. Carbon plus oxygen gives me carbon dioxide. The delta H is negative 393.5 kilojoules. And carbon monoxide plus half a mole of oxygen gives me CO2. And the delta H is negative 283.0 kilojoules. Now I know in most balanced equations we don't use fractions. But when we are doing thermochemical equations, we are allowed to use fractions. So the first thing I need to do is figure out that I need two carbons or two graphites. So I'm going to have to multiply the whole first equation and the delta H by two. Okay, the second thing I notice is that I need carbon monoxide as a, re as a product, not a reactant. So I'm going to rewrite the second equation. CO2 gas, jeez, that looks really bad, <laughs> uh, gives me CO gas plus one half O2 gas, and that's a one up there. But I also have to change the sign of the delta H because I reversed that equation. So now if I take a look at my equation, I have two carbons in the form of graphite, plus <clears throat> I have, um, this would give me two oxygens here and two carbon dioxides here. 
So uh, let's take a look here. I have a half of oxygen here. Well, that's not going to work out very well, is it? And the other thing I notice is I need two carbon monoxides. So I'm going to have to multiply this whole thing by two also. It's very messy, but if you see now, I have two carbon dioxides on both sides, so the two CO2s can cancel out. I have two oxygens uh, on the reactant side, and I have one half times two oxygens on the product side, which gives me one. So if I have one O2 on the product side and two O2s on the reactants, I can cancel out the O2 on the product side and have only one O2 on the reactant side, which is what I need. Finally, if I take a look, at, I have two carbon monoxides on the product side as my final answer here. So two C's plus O2 gives me CO, CO. And if I take a look, how I know I'm, I'm done is that this bottom equation should match what I have up here for the top. Now all this work is just so that I can figure out my delta H. So the last step that I have to do is I have to take negative 393.5 times 2 plus 283.0 times 2. When I add that all together, I can get my final delta H. When we calculate this, we should get negative 221.0 kilojoules. I'm going to let you try this next one on your own. If you have any trouble, this is 6.7 on page 244 and 245. So it is step by step. It is laid out in the book. Um, but this would be a good one to try. And if you have any questions, bring to class tomorrow. We will be doing some Hess's Law work tomorrow in class.